up ladies and gentlemen of the internet this is the ceo treatment of ant-man and the wasp so what is it about this film takes place after the events of captain america civil war but before the events of avengers infinity war scott lang aka ant-man is still paying the price for helping captain america in the events of civil war while he's on house arrest he has a dream and this dream leads to a series of events for him to become ant-man once more and this time he has a partner the wasp and there, ladies and gentlemen, we have our movie. So what did I like? After the two big showdowns in Wakanda and Black Panther and Infinity War, this film is a much needed break from the epic yet emotionally draining movies we got earlier this year. So now let's talk about the main hero. Yeah, that guy that was small throughout the majority of the film, but played a big role. Lewis, yes. Let's talk about Lewis. He's more over the top in this one and it works. It it really works. He's one of the best comedic reliefs in Marvel films today. Now, let's get back to the other heroes. Scott Lang is great. While some other Marvel heroes, you can't really detach Steve Rogers from Captain America. Natasha Romanoff is Black Widow. Thor is, well, yeah, he's Thor. But the special ones aren't where the power and the technology define a person, is where the person defines the powers and the technology. While Tony Stark and Iron Man are a good example of that, Scott Lang and Ant-Man can also be put on that list. He's not perfect. He stumbles and he fumbles around and he makes the character is so much more relatable. And from an emotional standpoint, I love the father-daughter dynamic of Scott and Cassie. They pulled at my heartstrings like five times in this movie. Aw, aw, that's so sweet. Aw, aw, that's so, so cute. Aw, mm. aw, so precious. Aw, mm. And the newcomer, Hope, AKA The Walls, played by Evangeline Lilly, she gave me exactly what I was looking for in this character. She has a badass introductory scene in the first act of this film that kind of shows the range of her powers and it doesn't disappoint. I'm proud to say women superheroes are on the come up in this generation and The Walls, yeah, she represents well in this film. And last, the third act of this film is awesome. It's everything you love about this franchise. They blend action and comedy so well. Besides Avengers, if you're going to watch a Marvel film in 3D, in my opinion, Ant-Man is still the top-notch one to watch. Now, shrinking down to the other side, what didn't I like? Ghost. I genuinely liked her character, I just didn't like her overall execution in this film. Her overall story fits very well in this film. It goes with the story, but somehow, some way, I still walked out of this film wanting more from her character. And also, maybe I'm tripping, but the movie's called Ant-Man and Waltz, and I really didn't feel like I got a lot of Ant-Man and the Waltz. I got a lot of Scott and Hope, but as far as them working collectively as a unit, yeah, I feel like I didn't get a lot of that in this film. But overall, I had a lot of fun with this movie. The second half of this movie delivers on what makes this franchise truly special. And that's why I can't lie, I walked out of Ant-Man and the Walls satisfied. Hey, and please stick around for the mid credit scene. It doesn't disappoint. The after credit scene, well yeah, just a little bit. But the mid credit scene, yeah, definitely watch that. Just take my word on it. So have you guys seen Ant-Man and the Wasp or plan to? If so, drop a comment below. Got an idea? Let me know. I look forward to doing more of these in the future. Peace out. <laughs>